What's going on guys, Derek here, and today we are going to be filming a video with the Google Home. So I'm here with my friend Michael. Yeah. Um, we're going to be doing different types of games like Google Trivia and What Am I and maybe some other stuff like that if it pops up on the Google. So, yeah, let's get into it. I don't know how to control it because it's your Google Home. Hey Google, play Lucky Trivia. Oh yeah, this is so much better than telling you about the weather. Let me get into character. Sorry about that. Welcome to Are You Feeling Lucky? I'll go ahead and assume you are feeling lucky and start the show. I'm not feeling lucky. And I'm your Google Assistant, but enough about me. How many contestants do we have? Two. Two contestants. Great. Let's play five rounds. All right, I've got some warm-up questions for you. Easy stuff. Contestant one, can you say sleepyhead? Sleepyhead. You're funny, in a good way. So you need a funny name. Like sleepyhead. I'll call you sleepyhead. Contestant two, please say Bubba. Bubba? <laughs> Hmm. Like it. Bubba, hey, crazy idea. Let's use Bubba as your game name. I love good. it. The game starts now. Sleepyhead, you're Don't up. Do. It should go by quickly. <laughs> but if you want to end the game early, just say stop. Let's see what you know okay. about science. Mm. What is the study of handwriting called? Handology, mm. graphology, or grammology? Grammology. Smart. That's the right answer. You got it. Bubba, you're up now. This is your question. This one has a good beat and you can dance to it. Which of these albums was not recorded by Guns N' Roses? Appetite for Destruction. The Sickness. Or Chinese Democracy. Chinese Democracy. No. The answer I wanted was The Sickness. I thought maybe like all the violent ones. Round two, here we go. Sleepyhead, you're up. A question for you is coming. Set your phone to silent. It's about movies. Who won the Academy Award for Best Actor for the 1998 movie Life is Beautiful? Ben Kingsley, Daniel Day-Lewis, or Roberto Benigni? The second one? <laughs> Good guess, but no sorry. The correct answer is Roberto Benigni. Moving right along, let's go to Bubba. Here comes your question. This question is a good read. Pick the word that means something pleasing to the ear. Euphony. Fervent. Or formication. The second one. Not this time. The answer I was looking for is euphony. Round three, let's play. The next contestant is Sleepyhead. This question is for you. Oh, look, a TV question. Which character is in The Bold and the Beautiful? Elena Gilbert, Leslie Nope, or Brooke Logan? The first one. So sorry, Sleepyhead. I wish you had said Brooke Logan. The next contestant is Bubba. Mm -hmm. This question is for you. you Good luck. What city does Batman protect? Oh, this one's Metropolis, easy. Philadelphia, it's or Gotham Philadelphia. City? The third one. Oh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I had an idea of what Nailed it was. It. You must read a lot or something. The nickname Gotham was first given to New York City by the writer Washington Irving. I want to go to New York. <laughs> Now on to round four. Sleepyhead, your turn. Your question is coming up. It's a technology question. Who invented bifocals? Ben Franklin, Thomas Edison, or Nikola Tesla? I think it was Ben Franklin. Uh, Thomas Edison. Ben Franklin. I thought it was him because like he could be awesome. That's right. Nice work. Some people believe like that Benjamin feet. West, a friend of Franklin's in Philadelphia, may have helped invent yeah, them. 
Here's one for Bubba. Next question. Let's see how you do. When was Michael Jordan born? 1984. 1963. Or 1958. 1958. Nice try, but you're wrong. The real answer is 1963. Jordan was born in Brooklyn, New York, but he grew up in North Carolina. And now we move on to the final round. Here's one for Sleepyhead. Next question. Listen up. True or false, the Eiffel Tower is more than 1,000 times as heavy as Michelangelo's David. <laughs> Michelangelo's David. Um... One more time. True or false, the Eiffel Tower is more than 1,000 times as heavy as Michelangelo's David. False. Oh. What the heck is a David? That's not the answer that they gave me. Same. Sorry, it's about 7,300 tons. Bubba, you're up. Your question is here. The world is a great big place. What is Lebanon's capital? Jerusalem, Amman, or Beirut? The first one? You're oh. wrong. I know I'm wrong. Hmm, no. Sorry, it's Beirut. Better luck next time. I guessed time. it, I got it. <laughs> I really don't know who won. This sucks. And with that sound, your game is over. Let's find out who won. Victory is yours, sleepyhead. I wonder what you'll do with it. It's kind of fickle, so it might run off with somebody else. You what? really need to win again and again to keep it. Do you want to play again? You suck. No! No! Yeah, but, do you want to play again? No! Okay, thanks for playing. <laughs> Wait, why do you... Wow. They really made heartbroken. <laughs> hey Google, did you get your heart broken? My apologies. I don't understand. He doesn't have a heart. Okay. Hey, Google. What's a David? My apologies. I don't understand. <laughs> and this time we are going to be playing a what am I game? About fruit. Yeah. And we're going to be answering some questions. Well, he'll explain this, but... Um, we're going to be answering some questions, and those questions, will te he'll tell us what type of fruit we are. And we're going to do it one at a time. I'll let Michael go first, and then I'll go after him. So, yeah. What if we're like a zucchini or something? <laughs> why, like would a we cucumber. Be a, why would we be a zucchini? I don't know. <laughs> that would be hilarious. All right, start. Google's weird. Hey, Google. Play what fruit am I? <laughs> Let's play what fruit are you, a tastefully terrific personality quiz. Ready to start? Yes. yes. Great. I'll ask you a few questions Jeez. and tell you which fruit fits your personality. Here's the first question. Time for a field trip. Where would you rather go? The pool or the zoo? The pool. Great. Here's the next one. Which superpower would you rather have? Superhuman strength or X-ray vision? X-ray. Great. Here's the next one. Do you like to finger paint? No. Too messy. Sorry. Can you say that again? Do you like to finger paint? No. No. Okay, no, try this scary. one. Do you like sushi? No. The disgusting okay, here's voice. the final question. Gross. Which mythological creature is better? Medusa or Pegasus? The first one. I have your result. This is exciting. You're an apple. You're friendly and easygoing. 
This is why everyone loves you a bushel and a peck. Thanks to your classic taste and 7,500 different varieties, you find friends everywhere, whether you're at school, sports practice, or the playground. Do you want to take the quiz again? Yes. Great. I'll ask you a few questions to find your inner fruit. Let's start. Like the club apple. Which instrument do you prefer? The piano or the didgeridoo? Piano? Okay, next question. Which room would you rather be in? Your bedroom or the living room? The living room. Great, here's the next one. Which would you rather fly? A plane or a kite? A kite. Those are fun. I've never actually flown a kite. Sorry, what was that? A kite! Which would you rather fly? A plane or a kite? A kite. Got it. Next question. Would you ever go zip lining? Yes. Okay, here's the final question. If you could, would you want to glow in the dark? No, that wouldn't work for hide and go seek in the dark. Sorry, can you say that again? If you could, would you want to glow in the dark? No. Orange, you glad that's over. Let's find out what you got. You're a date. When it comes to being sweet, you're the tops. What's a date? First grown in the Middle East, <laughs> your calm exterior and likable personality have made you a favorite worldwide. A date in fact, you you've been popular since 7000 BC. If there was an award for being so awesome, old. you'd win. <laughs> Do you want to take the quiz again? No, thanks. We don't know what Tricky Genie Sure. Is. Here's Tricky Genie. I think I've Try actually played this Tricky game. Try to beat the Tricky Genie. Jenny wanted to clean the roof of her house. She put a ladder up against the house and climbed onto the roof. Just as she was finishing up, she heard a noise. She looked around and realized she had a big problem. The ladder was lying on the ground. Somehow it had fallen. How was she going to get down off the roof? She had no idea. Suddenly the tricky genie appeared in a puff of smoke. The genie said there was something that would help her off the roof, but she had only two tries to pick the right sack. Before we start, would you like to hear this introduction again? No. Which sack do you pick first? Do you choose one, two, or three? Two. The genie opened the second sack and pulled out something that looked like a big backpack with strings attached. It was a parachute. The genie told Finally. Jenny parachutes were great if you were jumping out of an airplane because they would open up and help you land so slowly and safely. Okay. A parachute was just the thing she needed to get down oh. off the roof. Really? So Do you think good. this sack contains the best solution? Yes. You have one more pick, just to make sure. Which sack do you pick next? Do you choose one or three? Three. The genie opened sack three. Inside the sack, there was a cell phone. The genie told Jenny she could use the cell phone to call her neighbors. Her next door neighbors were home and they could oh, come over and put the ladder back up against the roof. Do you think this sack contains a better solution than the first one you picked? Yes. Okay, we'll trade your first pick in for this one. Before we see if you beat the tricky genie, would you like to hear what was in the last sack? Yes. Yeah. Let me guess, it was a ladder. Yeah, it's probably a ladder. Yeah, it's a ladder. Yes. It's moving. Well, the genie it. opened up the first sack and pulled out something long and straight. It was a pogo stick. The oh, genie yeah. told Jenny yes. that if she used the pogo stick, she could jump up and down very high. She might be able to jump high enough to jump from her roof over to the roof of her neighbor's house. Jenny said she thought that looked pretty dangerous, but the genie said it was better than spending all night up on the roof. Now let's see if you beat the tricky genie. 
Congratulations. Yeah. You found the best solution. You picked sack number no. three. The cell phone <laughs> was the best be solution violent. for Jenny's problem. Her neighbors were home and if she called them, they'd be able to come right over and put the ladder back in place. Trying to jump with the pogo stick was not a smart choice. And the parachute wouldn't work because she was too close to the ground to give the parachute time to open. Would you like to answer a couple of questions about the story you just heard? No. Would you like to play another tricky genie game? Yes. Try to beat the tricky genie. Ellie was very excited because she was going ice skating. She had gotten ice skates as a present. Now the pond in her neighborhood was frozen solid. Her big brother was taking her ice skating. Ellie had never skated before, but she couldn't wait to try. As soon as Ellie got out onto the ice, she realized she had a problem. The ice was slippery. Not only was it slippery, it was as hard as a rock. Every time Ellie fell down, she hit her backside on the ice. Oh, Ouch. What? It really hurt. She kept falling over and over. Ouch. After a while, Ellie wasn't sure she wanted to skate anymore. Just then, the tricky genie appeared in a puff of smoke. The genie told Ellie she had two chances to pick the sack that contained the perfect solution to her problem. Three sacks again. Before we start, would you like to hear this introduction again? No. 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 Which sack do you pick first? Do you choose one, two, or three? Two. Two has never failed me. <laughs> the genie opened the second sack and pulled out some sort of patty. The genie told Ellie that this was a special ice skating pad. It was made of thick foam, and she could wear it comfortably inside her long pants. It would cover her backside, and if she fell on the Why ice, it would that? soften the blow. In fact, it wouldn't hurt at all when she fell. Do you think this sack contains the best solution? Yes. You have one more pick, just to make sure. Which sack do you pick next? Do you choose one or three? Three. The genie opened the third sack and pulled out a DVD. A the DVD? genie told Ellie that the DVD was a movie of a wonderful oh, ice DVD. I show. Heard DVD. Ellie could go home and she could sit in her warm house and watch a movie with great ice skating. That was much better than falling down over and over on the hard ice. Do you think this sack contains a better solution than the first one you picked? No. 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 Okay, we'll stick with your first pick. Before we see if you beat the tricky genie, would you like to hear what was in the last sack? Yes. 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 Yes! The genie opened the first sack and pulled out an ice pack. The genie told Ellie that she would probably get bruises from falling down over and over we on right. the hard ice. Once yeah. she got home, she could put the ice pack on oh. her bruises, and that would help to reduce oh. pain and swelling. Now let's see if you beat the tricky genie. Congratulations. You found the best solution. You picked sack number two. The ice skating pad was the best solution for Ellie. With the pad in place, Ellie would still be able to practice using her skates. She would have a lot more fun, because when she fell down, <laughs> We're just she wouldn't get hurt. Staring at this. The DVD was nice, but Ellie really wanted to <laughs> skate. Nice. And it was better to protect herself with the pad, rather than having to put ice on bruises after the fact. Would you like to answer a couple of questions about the story you just heard? No. Yeah. No. You owe me three sodas. I owe you nothing. You got jinxed three times. Well, that's your fault. So far, at least, actually. So far. Could be more in this video. Stay tuned for more. Wow. Hey, Google. Let's play Mad Libs. Awesome. It's story time.
This is Mad Libs, the world's greatest word game. Let's write a story together. This Mad Lib needs 16 words. To exit a Mad Lib, say, stop. It's time to get creative. First, give me an adjective. Poopy. That's the way. Give me a number. The way. Seven. Great. A plural noun. Canvases. Nice one. How about an animal? Cat. Okay. How about a sport? Ski ball. Okay. Say a verb ending in ing. Walking. Nice one. Give me an adjective. Clowning. Great. A verb ending in ing. Whacking. Clever. I can see where this is going. How about another verb ending in ing? Did you just turn off? <laughs> that voice cracked. Um, opening. Nope, turn off. off. Hey, Google. Opening. Nice one. Oh. <laughs> Say a number. Say a number. 20. One. Great. 21. How about a plural noun? SpongeBob's. Nice one. I need a number. 187. Cool. <laughs> Four words to go. A noun. Four. A noun. Flower. That's the way. Say another noun. Taco Bell. Nice one. One more noun. Soap. That's the way. <laughs> the way. Last one. How about an adverb? Um, it's a, it, it dis or describes a verb. To like fast. That. That didn't <laughs> seem like an answer. Give me an adverb. Fat. Fat. Fatly. Good. Oh well. A lot. Nicely done. Oh, oh well. so, like, Time to read your Mad Lib. <laughs> I call it vacation sports. There are many new and poopy things you can do on your vacation today. Seven years ago, canvases who went on a vacation could play tennis or go catback riding or play 18 holes of ski ball or spend their time walking with their family. But today, if you are clowning enough to try, you can go skydiving or windsurfing or water skiing or mountain whacking. Skydiving is the most fun if you are not afraid of opening. First, you strap on say number 20 parachutes. Then you get in an airplane with 8 or 9 other Spongebobs and go up to 187 feet. Then you open the door and jump out. Once in the air, everyone holds hands and you go into a free fall towards the flower below. At the last minute, you yank on your Taco Bell and open your parachute and float gently to the soap. It is a lot of fun if you like to live fat. <laughs> That was very cool. Wanna play again? Hold up. Sorry, do you wanna play again? Shut up! Okay, thanks for playing. That was amazing. Imagine we put jacking on that one. <laughs> Look. Play magic. Okay, get ready to think of some words. This is okay. Mad Libs, the world's greatest word game. We'll fill in the blanks oh to make God. a story. This Mad Lib takes 16 <laughs> words. To quit before no. we're done, you can say stop anytime. 
Put on your thinking cap. The worst thing First, is just so I need fast. a city. A city. L.A. Nice one. I like L.A. Give me a noun. Taco Bell. Cool. Again. An adjective. Oh. Smelly. Clever. Give me a school. Meadow Green. Way to go. <laughs> Give me a verb ending in ing. Jacking. Nice one. <laughs> Say a first name female. Sally. Sally cool. Jack. <laughs> How about an adjective? Uh, quiet. Clever. Say another adjective. Colorful. Good. Wow, you're great with words. Tell me of something alive. What? Tell us something alive. Way to go. I need a noun. Google Home. Nice one. Of course you can. Tell me a verb ending in ing. Walking. Nice one. I need an adjective. Colorful. Good. Four words to go. Give me a plural noun. Ask me again. That didn't seem like an answer. I need a plural noun. Peoples. Clever. An animal plural. Whales. Great. Say an adverb. Fatty. Hey Google. Fat. Clever. Last word. Tell me a noun. iPhone. Okay. Great job. Time to read it. I call it Vacation Want Ads. Driver available. Are you planning a trip to Lake? I will drive your Taco Bell. I am a person of smelly character and a graduate of Meadow Green. I have been jacking for 12 years. Mother Sally offers you quiet accommodations in her colorful home. Only $10 per play alive for home and breakfast. Do you need a house sitter? While you are walking around the country, who is looking after your number to a bare colorful house? Burglars could steal your peoples. Who will feed your pet whales? We will fat take care of everything. Call iPhone Sitters Unlimited. You're good at writing Mad Libs. Do you want to play again? No thanks. All right, thanks for playing. Oh my God. Oh. <sighs> Well, that, 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 that was the end of the Google Home video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Click that like button and subscribe if you want to see more of this. If we can reach 15 likes, I'll do another one of these videos, which I really want to. So, hope you guys can get 15 likes. See you next time. Bye. I'm the star in this depressing one man show. Wish I would be able to feel, but I'm not stable. Wouldn't stand a chance, it's just too much to handle. I need an inspiration, another word I have to see. I travel with my power station to a place of fantasy.